everyone. Um, I'm Hillary, um, and uh, I'm an engineer. Um, thanks for the introduction, Helen. Um, and I've been really fortunate to get to work on quite a few things. So I'm originally from Canada. I did my undergraduate degree there in mechanical engineering. Um, and then I came to the UK to do my PhD in a subject called fluid structure interaction. And now I work um, in the aerospace industry. But one of the great things about engineering is you get all of these little like tool sets. So like a little bit of physics and a little bit of maths that you get to use to solve real problems. And I've been really fortunate. I've got to work in the renewable energy sector. So I've worked in wind and in hydro and in solar. Um, I worked on a documentary recreating the dam busters raid. So bouncing a bomb on a lake and blowing up a dam. Um, and I've worked on sort of concept feasibility of geoengineering or climate engineering with sort of high altitude tethered balloons. Um, so it's been um, quite diverse. But today, I want to talk to you about the stuff that's all around us. So there's nothing on the screen, but it's here. You know, we can interact with it, and oftentimes we don't really think about it. So in here, we're not really thinking about it. But if you are on Strava and you're on your bike, and there's a huge headwind, you are probably going to notice it. It's air and it's fluid. Um, and I get quite excited about it. Um, I work in the aerospace industry. And I wanted, I'm an engineer, so I had to bring something. And be it, they're quite simple. So I wanted to bring stuff that you could do at home. So we've all seen one of these. <laughs> so it's a paper airplane. And if you go on the internet, there are so many paper airplanes out there. But this is perhaps a classic. This is a dart. Who's made a paper airplane? Everyone? I hope everyone. Who's made a paper airplane that didn't work? <laughs> OK, good. So when I throw it, you can sympathize with me. Um, so this one's called a dart, and sort of some of the things you might notice. So it kind of has fairly small wings. Um, how it's folded, where the center of mass is, is a big impact to whether or not your paper airplane is going to be a good one. So this one's called a dart. It's a classic one. It should work, in theory, if I give it a good throw. Usually they're quite fast. Not bad. Reasonable one. Um, and usually if your paper airplane is not working, one of the big things is where your center of mass is. So usually doing a little bit of trimming with weight is important. So on this one, I've attached some paper clips at the back, which is probably what you don't want to do. Because then, my center of mass, though it was here, is now going to go somewhere over here. My lift force is somewhere over here. So it's going to want to do that. And that's not great for flying, because you stall. And you don't get a very good reaction. Now, my next ones sometimes work and sometimes don't. But this is the opposite way. So this is um, more of a glider. And there's something called lift-induced drag, which the sort of higher aspect ratio wing, which would be the span, so the tip-to-tip -tip length versus the cord, you decrease the amount of drag you have. So in theory, this should fly a little bit better um, and have a better sort of lift-to-drag ratio. Oh. <laughs> I have two. I'll pick it up. This one's usually not as good. <laughs> my green one is better than my red one. Oh, there we go. So a reasonable one. Um, and you can see the folding on that is quite important, because you need to get the center of mass sort of far forward. And why I'm interested in some of the gliding type ones is I recently learned to fly one of these. Woo. <laughs> yeah. So only about a month ago, I went solo. So I had my first solo flight in a glider. So there's no engine. And if any of you ever get the opportunity to go gliding or try gliding, please do it. It is an amazing experience. And it's completely different to powered flying. So when you're up in a powered airplane, there's like vibration, there's noise. It kind of maybe is smelly if it's in a single seat or in a like propeller driven thing in a glider. And maybe if you're a bit of a fluid dynamics nerd, it's amazing because you're sitting there and it's peaceful and it's beautiful and it's quiet. And all of you here is the whooshing and the whistling of this structure going through the air. Um, so I do have another demo, but Unfortunately, it didn't work super well, so I'm going to show a video of it instead. But I brought it along all the same. So these are another sort of plane. And again, you could make one at home. It's made of very, very lightweight foam. Um, there's a little bit of a balsa wood with just some 
very high quality engineering cello tape at the front. Um, but they're really, really lightweight. And if I drop one, you sort of see it's, it's very floaty and graceful. And in a glider, one of the things you do is you use the um, air around you, so the atmospheric effects, because you want to stay up. And I mean, gliders that are high performance are very high performance. So for 60 paces, I would go this way, I would go down one, and that would be my glide ratio, right? So I could go forward 60 and down one. Um, but if I find the right kind of atmospheric effect, I might be able to stay up a little bit longer. So that little glider that I flew, um, if you have a board, you can create your own atmospheric effect. So they often find thermals or you would find a ridge. So I was uh, in Cambridge and I found a nice long haul. I tried it here, but it's a little bit short. Um, so this is the same glider that I threw and a piece of cardboard. And what you can do is as you walk along down the corridor, you can make the little glider not descend. So it's called a walk-along glider, and you kind of keep going, and you have to get the right technique. Um, but it sort of floats along gently in front of you. <laughs> yeah. So it's a pretty amazing thing, and there's a few different types, but they're called walk-along gliders. You're pushing the air upwards as you walk along, and you kind of maintain the glider just there in front of you. Um, so, um, I put this up because this has all been sort of rigid, rigid body stuff, but when I first started the talk I said I did fluid structure interaction. Um, and on the left hand side, there's sort of your conventional airfoil going through flow, you get streamlines coming over, you get a change in pressure on the top and the bottom surface, you generate lift. Um, but one of the things that I find quite interesting is when you add another effect on top of that, which is a classic engineering model of a mass on a spring, but it's airfoil shaped. So this would be aeroelasticity. So you would have the fact that though you have something rigid going through the air, you're gonna get a force on it, it's going to deflect because all structures have some amount of elasticity. When it does deflect, that means the flow around it will change, which means that it might change shape and it might start doing something a little bit more unique, and you might get coupling between the fluid and the structure, hence fluid structure interaction or aeroelasticity. So for those of you who have done an engineering degree, you're going to have seen this video. Um, for those of you who haven't, and you're going to do an engineering degree, you'll see it too. Um, but this is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, and this is one of the classic examples of aeroelasticity. And it's not very often that you see a structure made out of concrete and steel moving around like a piece of cooked spaghetti. Um, but ultimately it failed. Um, but this is an effect called flutter. So there's wind coming down the valley. It's not excited by an earthquake or anything like that. There's wind coming down the valley, coupling with the dynamics of the structure, causing feedback, and causing it to move in that way um, and ultimately fail. Um, so those are the kind of some of the things that I'm really interested in. Um, I have one more demo that I was going to end with. It's another one of a little bit of luck, and it has to do with the walk-along glider type of thing. So I'm going to do it, but if it doesn't work, I might just continue walking off the stage, and then you can <laughs> applaud me as I go. <laughs> but, whoops. So this is the really easy one to make, but it takes a certain amount of technique. It is a piece of tracing paper. You need very lightweight tracing paper and then highly engineered with two folds. Um, the folds need to be in the right direction and you need to get some dihedral, which means you have an amount of um, like that, which gives, <laughs> gives stability. So I'm gonna have a few attempts of this, but in theory, I should be able to make it float along. Yeah, yeah, okay, applause, applause. Thank you. That's so brilliant. Thank you so much.
Valerie Costello!